one of the keys to life is, first of all, develop detachment. Don't let anyone have anything over you, which means don't need anything too badly. If you need a video game too badly, if you need a movie series too badly, if you need a certain brand of food too badly, you've already screwed up. If you need a job too badly, you've already screwed up. If you need a girl or a relationship or sex too badly, you've already screwed up. If you need a man too badly, if you need a marriage too badly, you've screwed up. If you go into a business negotiation or you're negotiating with an employer for a salary, or if you're buying a house or you're selling a business, the one who loses the negotiation is the one who's most attached to closing the deal. And the one who wins the deal and gets the best value is the one who is willing to walk away without any worry of losing anything. That's real power. Learn that lesson and cultivate it across your whole life. Become independent. Don't hinge your happiness or your feelings of love on any external source. Because as you do, you'll become a slave to that source. Whether it's a drug or alcohol or food or desserts or soft drinks or cigarettes or video games, you're going to become a slave to that thing. Maintain your poise, detachment and independence. And to do that, you need to re-ground all of those attachments into something deeper within yourself. And that's what spirituality is about. You see, spirituality is a very practical thing. If you're deeply grounded in your own consciousness and you're able to love yourself and you're able to love the world without attachments to various things and various biases, this leaves you in a perfectly poised, centered place from which you can act maintaining your own integrity, enforcing your own values, having a high sense of self-esteem, and you're able to be very effective in dealing with people. And when people cross your boundaries, you quickly enforce them and you put them in their place. And then you don't get exploited and abused by people, not by salespeople, not by family members, not by lovers, not by your children. People need to know that you're serious. People need to know that you've got values and standards and you're not, you're not gonna compromise. People need to know that if they cross you once, they'll get a warning. If they cross you twice, they'll get a serious warning. And if they, if they cross you a third time, that's it. Three strikes, they're out. You cut them out of your life. You're not going to be giving them fourth and fifth and sixth and tenth chances to redeem themselves. You're a, you're a busy person. You got a life to live. You got a life purpose. You got, you got something going on in, in your life. You got values that you're trying to live by. And people need to sense that. That's what makes you strong and powerful. And then people will look up to you because they'll see you like this rock or this anchor. This is what makes you a powerful leader. And it's difficult to do that because a lot of times we fall into this notion of sort of a false feminine compassion where we are just compassionate to everybody, even when they are abusive to us. No, that's not what love means. There is a higher love. The higher love is what I'm talking about is maintaining your poise and integrity. And sometimes that means putting someone in their place, cutting them out of your life, not shopping with a certain brand or company anymore because they've crossed the line and not taking shit from people, not being a doormat. That is a higher love. That is a love and an honoring of your own highest self, allowing you to maintain your autonomy and power, which you need to live the highest, most loving way in your life. You think you're being maximally loving by letting all of these people exploit you and walk all over you. No, that is not the highest love. And it's also not serving them because when you put them in their place, when they cross you, when you enforce boundaries, this actually wakes them up because they realize, ah, I can't keep acting like a selfish asshole. I can't keep exploiting people. It's not an effective strategy. And then that forces them to rethink their ways. Whereas if, if you're gonna be bending over backwards for this person, that's not gonna help them to wake up. That's not gonna help them to find love within themselves. That's just gonna make them ex exploit you in lazy ways. And this will save you lots of money. This will save you heartbreak. This will save you from terrible divorces and abuse and uh, carn artists exploiting you. There are a lot of people who have had their lives completely ruined because all they did was just naively tolerate others gradually exploiting them more and more and more and more, whether it was their lovers or their family, even their family members, even your family members can do this to you or within business, within finance, or your employer can do this to you. Sometimes confrontation is important. And if you're not willing to ever get into a bit of a confrontation, 
then really what that shows you is that you're too much of a coward. You're too scared what others think of you, how others judge you. You're too fearful of standing up to authority or to others who are stronger than you. And when you do that, people don't respect you and they exploit you even further. And then you stop respecting yourself too. And then you start to feel bad about yourself and you start to feel unworthy.